A magnificent overview of America's economic difficulties that succinctly points out the root of the problem, the Federal Reserve. Time to end it. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. What made America great was the fact that the average Joe could work hard and provide for his family. It was called the American dream. But somewhere along the way something went wrong, and the dream became a nightmare. The biggest culprit in the death of the American dream is the US federal government. In general, when a government stays put and does not infringe on the personal and financial lives of its people, one can almost bet that things will remain pretty stable. However, sooner or later a government becomes a Frankensteinian operation that must feed its gargantuan creature called bureaucracy. And the only way to feed that giant monster is with money, which then becomes the state's obsession since it can never have enough. Soon the state's relationship with the citizenry it was meant to serve becomes exactly like that of a two-bit mafia don with its coerced victims, I want my cut. Capiche? Eventually the state's obsession with money trickles down to every stratum of society. As Newton's third law of motion proved, for every action there is systematically an equal reaction accompanied by opposite reactions no one expected. And that's what went wrong in America. As the money obsession spread, money morphed from a means to an end to the end of all means, with terrible consequences. The purpose or the end of money has become money itself. As a result, all responsibility has been thrown out the window. The problem began at the federal level when the US government, USG, allowed the Federal Reserve System to come into existence, without any congressional oversight and without constitutional ratification. The Fed, as it is called, is a private institution disguised as federal that creates money out of thin air. Its primary purpose is to enrich its secret and not-so-secret members via unlimited money printing. Its secondary purpose is to feed the USG's gargantuan operations, at the right interest rate, of course. Hence to the Fed money as its own end. It creates money to get money. And the reason it is so is because the con artists who control it via their private banks made it so. The robber barons of old used money as a means to develop the United States by creating infrastructures and industries. But not today. Our contemporary robbers only want money for money's sake. They create money with no worth, i.e., with no gold or silver to back it up, and give it the veneer of value through various money market instruments. The Fed is an ungodly printing machine of fiat money or paper money solely at the disposal of irresponsible money-addicted monsters who can never accumulate enough. When a mom-and-pop business takes roots, its purpose is to take care of the family. Its end is noble. However, as megacorporations displace the majority of the mom-and-pop businesses throughout the US, their only purpose becomes the satisfaction of their greedy shareholders who apparently can never get enough profit. Thus profit becomes the ungodly god. If there is not enough of it, employees who depend on their jobs to care for their families are laid off without any sense of responsibility or mercy, while CEOs still get to cash their multi-million dollar paychecks, salaries that could easily be reduced and redistributed to keep more employees on board until a recovery. In truth, these CEOs need a hard adjustment. The bottom line is no longer the family's well-being, but the profit margin of corporations and the padded bank accounts of their executives. Though there are many good Americans throughout the land who still espouse good old-fashioned morality, there are also many who embrace greed as their primary end in life. Greed is an ungodly cancer that plunges those who harbor it into moral and spiritual bankruptcy. Strangely, it's not just the rich and the super-rich who are infected with its virus. Millions of Americans want money the easy way, just like the Fed. If you doubt it, then go to, to a place where they sell that government-controlled monopoly scam called lottery, and take a gander at that long line of folks hoping to win their ticket to unlimited money printing. Greed can be the poor or middle-class man's obsession as well. And that's why credit cards have also been made readily available, thanks to the Fed's largesse. The idea is to drive people into high-interest debt which they accumulate purchasing trifles they don't really need. So the indebted juggle many jobs, not to feed their families, but to pay off their irresponsible debts and further enrich greedy banksters. At the federal level the aftermaths are numerous. Number 1. Inflation. Before the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913, 
there was barely any inflation, except mostly during times of war and conflict. However, following the Fed's money printing addiction or QE, quantitative easing, change in prices skyrocketed, get ready for a $10 loaf of bread soon. The Fed's incessant and irresponsible money printing, or QE ad infinitum, has debased the currency and vaulted the cost of living through the roof, and the average family can only struggle to make ends meet. Number 2. Taxes. To pay the shysters at the Fed who convinced the USG bureaucracy to borrow from them, federal income taxes began their reign of terror, even though in 1895 the US Supreme Court ruled that the income tax was unconstitutional. Consequently, in 1913 the same year the Fed was founded, no coincidence there, Congress, according to Tax Foundation, passed the 16th Amendment to the Constitution, which made the income tax a permanent fixture in the U.S. tax system. The amendment gave Congress legal authority to tax income and resulted in a revenue law that taxed incomes of both individuals and corporations. However, according to some experts, said amendment was not properly ratified by all 50 states and therefore is invalid. No surprise or coincidence there either. In other words, the USG created a problem called the Fed which they squarely laid at the feet of the American people. In so doing, the USG continually extracts pounds after pounds of flesh from American families, and in the process turns Shylock into a saint. Number 3. Wars. To encourage the USG to borrow more money, the secret members of the Fed coerced it into various wars, which in turn caused the income tax to rise significantly along with inflation, thereby imposing an even greater burden on the American people. Almost all wars, in a hundred years or so, have been paid for through inflation, that is debasing the currency, explained Ron Paul. Number 4. Corruption. As the Fed befouled the members of the USG in Congress through bribe and coercion, mega-businesses and groups of the super-rich also began exerting their influence by buying their way in. It is no wonder that almost every federal agency, i.e., FDA, EPA, etc., has also become corrupt, pimping for the likes of Big Pharma, Monsanto, etc. without any regard for how their decisions affect the well-being of American families. America is just an oligarchy with unlimited political bribery being the essence of getting the nominations for president or being elected president. And the same thing applies to governors and U.S. senators and Congress members, revealed former President Jimmy Carter. Supra-billionaire George Soros said in Open Society, reforming global capitalism reconsidered that, individual states and national populations should not be allowed to govern their own economic affairs, instead, this process will be accomplished by a global financial elite. Oh, really? Number 5. Unemployment. Mega corporations bribed Congress to pass various international trade agreements that siphoned thousands upon thousands of manufacturing jobs out of America. These companies then conveniently shipped these jobs overseas in order to pad their bottom line using cheap labor, which could have been found in the US if inflation created by the Fed did not cause costs to skyrocket. Number 6. Police State. In order to keep the Fed and big business in control of the USG, a police state has been erected to keep the sheeple docile. It has become so bad that the people's representatives even vote against the will of the people they supposedly represent, not feigning so much as a modicum of care for the wishes of their constituents. Said disposition has firmly trickled down to cops who have turned savagely wild on those they have sworn to protect and serve. So how come the American people keep voting back in office all these so-called representatives of the people? Maybe the American people are not to blame. Maybe the computers tallying the votes are rigged. Number 7. The financial chaos. It's been an ongoing problem in the American household for quite some time. Samuel J. Gardano, executive director of the American Bankruptcy Institute, said, a combination of economic stress, including high debt loads, rising unemployment and unsustainable mortgage burdens, left many consumers with little choice but to seek the financial relief of bankruptcy. Consumer filing totals have fluctuated over the past decade as there have been changes in law in addition to the housing and financial downturns. The year 2005 saw a high mark of 2 million consumer bankruptcies. So what did Congress do to corner the consumer and favor the bankers? It enacted the Bankruptcy Abuse Prevention and Consumer Protection Act, which tightened requirements for filing. Consumer filings then dropped to 600,000 in 2006, 
but then rose each year until they registered over 1.5 million filings in 2010 amidst the housing and financial downturns, further explained Gerdano. Number 8. The Family Chaos. The family unit in America is fast disintegrating. The causes are numerous. Lack of jobs, debt that causes stress, breakdown of moral principles, the constant pursuit of the dollar above family relationships, etc. These cause marital friction and then divorce. It is estimated that close to 50% of couples who get married end up calling it quits. The obsessive pursuit of money for money's sake has failed America. From the moment said objective was set in motion, America was doomed. To an individual a noble purpose is important, and equally as significant are a corporation's goal and a government's mission. If the object of any entity is money above everything else, sooner or later a breakdown will materialize. For example, the reason the Godfather movie series was a success was because of one simple factor. In the midst of all its crimes and conspiracies to commit more crimes, the heart of the storyline, its objective, was family. You don't mess with the family and you don't betray the family. Everything the head of the Corleone clan did was to protect and provide for his family, which he saw as his main purpose and duty, though we by no means approve of his immoral methods of achieving success, something the storytellers made sure he paid dearly for and something the Don himself no longer wanted to rely on. The strength of the Godfather's family unit and the might of its patriarch, especially in the midst of a women's lib movement trying to unseat man from his God-given role within his family, were what really stirred and still stirs the endearment cinephiles all over the world feel for the series, even if most people don't realize why they love it so. These powerful undertows resonated loudly, and together with masterful filmmaking and acting catapulted the movies amongst America's top classics and consolidated their enduring appeal. Check your TV listings, they're always showing somewhere. Not too shabby for a mostly made in the 70s movie series. What other flicks, especially made during that period, can claim that? It's time for America, and most of the world that follows America's lead, to go back to the basics. It's time to rediscover mankind's true objectives. It's time for God and his laws, loving patriarchal family, and purposeful responsibility. In other words, money needs to be redefined as a refrained and practical means to these ends, while the intrinsic value it once possessed, with precious metals, needs to be reinstated. However, for money to ever recover its worth we must end the Fed. The love of money is the root of all evil. Timothy 6.10 The pursuit of money above everything else has even trickled down in the church, where the relentless quest for earthly riches has replaced the truth of God's word and his plan for the family. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.